Yo, what is going on, guys? Welcome back to another video. So we are now somehow a third of the way through the NHL season. It is absolutely breezed by. So I thought today would be a fun idea to go through what my preseason predictions were and then update those preseason predictions, what they would be right now going forward for the rest of the year. Because spoiler alert, some of the teams that I thought were going to be really good, maybe not playing as good as I thought. Some of the teams that I thought weren't going to be that good, playing better than they are right now. Preseason predictions are pretty wild. So without further ado, let's dive into it. We're going to do the Pacific Division first. Here are my preseason predictions for the Pacific. As you can see, it's my Instagram, so I'm not like editing these to make myself look better. I'm being very transparent. Up first, Oilers went into the division. Probably not going to happen at this point. Had him at 111 points. Kings, I was very high on the Kings, 104. Knights, 102. Flames, 98. Canucks, I was decently high on at 93. Kraken, 88. Ducks, 70. Sharks, 56. And as for what my predictions would be right now, updated, it is pretty different. It got the LA Kings at 110. I really like how they're playing this year. Their system is so sound that even though they did struggle over the weekend against the Islanders and the Rangers, those are two very good teams. And I think that their system is so good in the sense that they they don't play down to inferior competition. They get two points from the worst teams in the league. And in terms of collecting points, that's very efficient. Is Cam Talbot's play completely sustainable? Probably not to a degree, but also Aiden Hills probably isn't either. So I think the Kings are going to end up winning the division. It's going to be a battle between them and the Knights. But when I look at the Knights, they don't really give a shit about a division title for the Kings, especially after losing to the Oilers in back-to-back -back years in the uh, first round of the playoffs. They're going to want to get that that first round against a wild card team instead of, say, a team in the division. So I think they're going to ball out at the end. Vegas Golden Knights, just a wagon for the most part. Uh, will they pull an LTIR shenanigan this year as well? It's definitely possible. So I have them coming in at second at a pretty comfortable 10-point lead on the Edmonton Oilers at 99 points. They've been playing fantastic. Obviously, seven straight, and it wouldn't shock me over their next, I think they have 58 games remaining or something if they finish at like that at like a 70% points percentage and get to almost 100 points this year. It was obvious that the goaltending was just so horrendous early on. The underlying numbers, the, def the defensive numbers weren't fantastic, but the offensive firepower was still there. They just weren't shooting at their normal normal rates. Both have stabilized. They've been getting, been getting better goaltending as well as shooting better as a team. And as a result, I think they're going to make the playoffs and make it pretty comfortably in a pretty wide open West right now. Canucks coming in at fourth. I think they've banked enough points to safely make the playoffs. You're going to see in the central, they easily would be in a wild card spot here, the first wild card spot. They've definitely started to slow down once Demko's not giving them 935 save percentage, once they're not shooting 15, 16% as a team. They had a 109 PDO and they went 10, 2, and 1 to start the season. That was unsustainable, but I still think going forward, remaining. 55 games from them, they're going to be a 55 to 60% points percentage team and pretty easily cruise to that playoff spot considering they have had this great start. Then there's a fat drop-off, 19 points worth of a drop-off for the Calgary Flames. Uh, I, if they kept their current core together, I think they'd be maybe an 88-point team, maybe even 90 if they decided to buy at the deadline or just keep the team as it is. But it's pretty obvious at this point, they're below 500 right now. They got to sell at the deadline. They got to trade Lindholm. They got to trade Hannafin. They got to trade Tanev. They're expiring UFAs. So they're going to be entering this kind of rebuild. So I expect them to maintain their current pace of under 500. It wouldn't shock me if they're even worse considering those three players or like three out of their top five or six players on the entire team. So they're definitely going to crater. I, I could see the Kraken finishing ahead of them, but I don't think the Kraken have not been good this year. They have like a 39% points percentage right now. The goalie tandem has yet again been absolutely brutal for them. Last year, they were able to outshoot their problems. They were first in the entire league and goals scored above expected. That is regressed to around the middle of the pack. That's why I didn't have them in the playoffs to start in my preseason predictions. I had them at only 88 points, and they have been far worse than even I thought they'd be, and I don't really see that changing unless something drastic happens or some massive trade. Ducks, great start, have obviously kind of petered out. They're a bottom five team at this point pretty easily. I don't think that's that controversial. John Gibson is no longer playing elite. Dostal's not playing. They started out with like one of the best goalie tandems in the entire league. That was unsustainable. So right now, I think they are on pace for like around 68 points. San Jose Sharks, month ago, probably would have had him at like 48 points. Now they're at 59, so that's improvement, I guess. But still, they are one of the below average teams in the league, even with their, their amazing week that they just had when they got 
five out of six possible points. They're definitely playing better right now, but they should still be selling at the deadline pretty heavily as well as not having a ton of high level talent. So I think they are going to a four or five game losing streak is going to happen pretty soon. And people are going to not be surprised, but people are like, Oh yeah, these are the sharks. They're not very good. Next up. We got the central division. I had the stars winning it before the season at 110 points. The avalanche at 106 wild 99 jets making the playoffs in a wild card spot. Blues, Preds, Yotes, Hawks, obviously there has been some change, mainly the Minnesota Wild kind of falling off, switching places with the Winnipeg Jets. I still have the Stars winning it. They haven't been that good, but honestly, most of their depth pieces have played pretty good. It's more so with Jason Robertson only has 24 points in 26 games. Ottinger has not been as good as he has been in prior years. So I think they are eventually going to pick it up and finish out winning this division. The Avalanche were my Stanley Cup pick, a little bit scary in terms of that. The depth pieces haven't really performed to what I expect. The Joe Hansen, uh, Jonathan Duran, Duran's been god awful. So I'm not nervous. I still think they're going to easily be a playoff team. Might have to change my Stanley Cup pick midseason, depending on what they do at the deadline. Still think they're going to safely make the playoffs, though. Jets with Kyle Connor out now. That's a little bit concerning. He had a bad knee to knee hit uh, last night. I think they're probably doing the medical tests right now. If he's out six plus weeks, maybe they could miss the playoffs. But right now they're so far ahead of the wild card spots right now and in the div- in the central division as a whole that I think as long as he's less than six, five, four weeks, they're going to be perfectly fine. They're a very well-balanced team as of right now. And obviously Hellebuck and Ned is one of the best in the entire league. So I think they're going to pretty easily cruise to a playoff spot. Minnesota Wild, as bad as they've been, they're obviously five and two now under John Hines. They're kind of surging. And when looking at them, they definitely weren't dominating play, but it was more so their goalie tandem like the Edmonton Oilers that was worst or second worst in the entire league lost Dean Evans in his job. Now that John Hines has stepped in, he's definitely infused them with some energy, but their goalies are just playing better. And as a result, they're winning. I would still pick them to finish ahead of the Preds, Blues and Yotes who do have like a couple points in hand on them right now. But I think based on what the wild have shown in the last couple of years, they are the more, they're just a better team, more complete team, more veteran team. So I think the Wild right now would get into a playoff spot at 90 points. The Wild card one would be the Canucks. Wild card two would be the Minnesota Wild. Predators missing out by four points. They've kind of surprised me this year. I had them at 84. I think they do kind of overperform that. UC Soros isn't even playing that good, and they're at 86 points. Or, or They're above 500 right now. So if he starts cooking, I could see them making the Wild card. As, as crazy as that is to say, I was very low on them coming into the season. St. Louis Blues is a little bit of a different story. They've actually been around 500, but that's with Bennington playing so good, playing out of his mind compared to his last two years. So I think they might slow down. Coyotes, I don't know how sustainable Connor Ingram's play is. So I don't, I don't, I still don't have them getting that many points. And the Chicago Blackhawks are the worst or second worst team in the entire league, depending on the San Jose Sharks. Lost Taylor Hall, lost Corey Perry. They're going to be selling at the deadline. It's going to be ugly. They're not going to be that good of a team. Over to the Metro division we go. These were my preseason. The Canes at 113, Devils 106, Rangers 100, Penguins 96, Islanders 92, Capitals 89, Jackets 75, Flyers 64. There's been a lot of changes in the Metro division. Now I have the Rangers winning the division at 111 points. I think you got to kind of have them. They have by far been the best team in the entire league and has have probably the best goalie tandem in the entire league. Maybe outside of Vegas, Quick has been out of his mind good. Uh, the Devils still at 101. I think they end up making the playoffs. They're starting to kind of surge right now. All the, uh, they did just lose to Edmonton, but they're still 5-2 and two or 6-2 and two in their last 7 or 8. So I think they're starting to pull it together, even with Dougie Hamilton out. I think they're going to make it. Hurricanes have been very bad. If you told me before the season, the Hurricanes, I'd be projecting them a third of the way into the season to only have 98 points. I'd be pretty surprised. They've been a regular season wagon. I still think they are going to make the playoffs. They're having a horrible start and they're still on pace for like 88, 89 points right now. The goalie tandem has been horrendous. Freddie Anderson, sneaky MVP of, MVP of the entire league just because of how bad Kachetkov and Ront is playing right now. But I think they're going to figure it out. The defensive system has been a lot weaker than in years past. And part of that is Tony D'Angelo kind of busted. Orlov does not look like the same player. I think Rod Brindamore is going to figure it out and get this team into the playoffs. I have my New York Islanders in a wild card spot. Even with them blowing all their leads right now, they're on pace for like, 97 points and they're really surging right now obviously just beat the la kings beat the shit out of the columbus blue jackets they've looked very good i think they've got in seven out of their eight last possible points in four games so they're playing very good capitals at 91 
just barely missing the playoffs, just barely missing the playoffs, but they've exceeded expectations. I had them at 89 points. I I thought the Capitals were kind of an underrated team coming into the season. Can they keep up? Can Charlie Lindgren keep on playing like an elite number one? Probably not. Uh, We'll see how it goes with them, but I still think they're going to be in the mix. Penguins are a very weird team for me because... The power play has been absolutely horrible. Some of their other guys, their depth pieces haven't really stepped up. Mike Sullivan has a lot of work on his hands. They're below 500 right now. I don't know in that loaded Metro division if they can overcome that. We'll see. But right now I have them outside. Flyers have been fantastic. They're in a division spot right now. I still cannot believe in that roster. I have them at 76 points, which is still far above what I had him before the season at 64 points, but I think they eventually will slow down like they kind of did last year. I know last year it was by no mid November, late November. They slowed down. We're already into mid December, but I still don't fully believe in them. And then the blue jackets are kind of just an utter disaster. I don't think I'm breaking any news with that one. They're, they're already cooked. And then lastly, we got the Pacific division, the Leafs in first senators in second lightning in third Bruins in a playoff spot at 95 Panthers at 92 Sabres at 88 wings at 81 Habs at 69. And it, there's a lot of change. Um, safe to say that Bruins at 117. I would have them winning the present trophy right now. They're just such a consistent regular season wagon. Cause they obviously have the best goalie tandem in the entire league that, that I really don't think that that's close. Maybe they haven't fully perform like it. Maybe you could say the Rangers is better right now, but for the next two thirds, I'm easily taking the Bruins. So they're just a very consistent wagon of a regular season team that I think is just going to keep on racking up points. Leafs at 107, bit of a dis- disappointing start to the season by their standards, I guess, but they still have like a 66% points percentage. They're on pace for around 107. Panthers have been fantastic. Sam Reinhart, my MVP, my Reinhart right now. I had the Ottawa Senators at 91, making the playoffs. I think I had the Washington Capitals also at 91 points. I got to die on this hill, if that makes sense. I understand it's not logical. They, they have, they've, they've been a 500 team, and they have like five games on hand, and like everybody in the entire league, they barely put any games. But I'm going to die with this take. They were my sleeper team that I predicted to finish second in the Atlantic Division. I understand it's not logical. You can roast me in the comments but I'm just going to stand with it. Uh, if, I'm going to take the L, assuming they don't make it. But right now, I think that they still do have a chance because they've had everything go against them to start the season. Shabbat got hurt. Uh, Ridley Gregg got hurt. Pinto got suspended. He'll be coming back in like 15 games. Uh, just everything went wrong. Dorian situation, uh, ownership, all that. They've been go- going through a lot. I still think they have the talent on paper to potentially make the playoffs. I know I'm crazy for saying that. Lightning in fifth. Vasilevsky doesn't, he's playing better of late, but Vasilevsky doesn't quite look like Vasilevsky of late. They didn't have the best start because Vasilevsky was out. Johansson was not that good of a goalie. And just overall, I think Hedman has looked pretty horrendous defensively this year. The analytics show he's been one of the worst defensive defensemen in the entire league. Sergachev, not as good as last year. Stamkos has been very good. Point has been about the same as last year. Kucherov's playing out of his mind, but the bottom six really gives them nothing night in and night out. So I think 90 points missing the playoffs. Wings. Dylan Larkin getting hurt is going to hurt them a lot in terms of JT Comfer having to play first line center. If he's out, if Larkin's out four plus weeks, then I, I don't think they're going to make the playoffs. Regardless, I think they are due for some regression. They were shooting out of their mind to start the season. I don't really believe in the Reimer, Alex Lyon, Husso goalie trio as of right now. I don't think that that's that good of a goalie trio. So I think going forward, they are going to slow down a little bit and end up missing the playoffs. Sabres. They just weren't ready. I, I think people put too many expectations on them. Devin Levi is playing better of late, but he's not a legit number one. UPL is not a legit number one. There was just far too much hype on this team. Obviously, Tage Thompson missed some games, but I, I just don't think their young guys are quite ready to take that next step, even though they looked so good last year. It's clear that that, that, that was not fool's gold, but that, that made them think that their rebuild was further along when they're still maybe a year or two away. And then the Canadians have looked very good, but I still, we, I think we can all agree they are the worst team in the Atlantic division. And I think they are going to eventually slow down. 75 points still be, still would be a pretty decent season by the Canadians. So overall we got the Atlantic, the Metro, the Central and the Pacific. Let me know in the comments. What do you think about these updated third of the way through the season predictions and I'll be seeing you in the next one.